Welcome back everybody to the last part of the reverse engineering the trading view API series. I started this series slash project in order to teach people about API hacking and how it works and how you can reverse your own API to get data that you might need. I've gotten pretty far with all of the documentation and so far with the wrapper we're just about done for this video i plan to clean up all the documentation um, finalize the wrapper and find any more requests that i may have missed whenever we started doing all of the intercepting so after all of this i'm just going to go back and write any extra documentation on those endpoints if there are any that i do find but as of for now let's look over the wrapper the wrapper really isn't too complicated, um, it's just to, supposed to be a way for you to automate the request. Um, we're having some issues with these functions down here, but as of for now, it's just a class that has all of the different requests in it, and you initialize the um, headers like this along with passing in that cookie data. If your request does need a um, session ID, um, I believe some of these do, you can pass these into the init function or you init the class and then it should work. Of course, you can change and modify this wrapper to do however or whatever you want. I'm just doing very minimal documentation on this, but most of these functions already do work, but I'm having some troubles with this one, and I think I'm probably gonna have some troubles with all of these, so we'll just see what happens. Another thing I do wanna make clear is that all of the documentation is written by ChatGPT, so if there are any hallucinations that you see, please open an issue or DM me um, and let me know. I've already found some things that just make all the documentation look a little weird, it, um, maybe some kind of inconsistency or something of that sort, but really what we're looking for is a main header, um, a note on what it is, you know, something of this sort. We want to replicate um, this kind of uh, breakdown of it. And as you can see, there's a little over 2,000 lines of um, documentation here. so. Hopefully you will be very well informed along with all kinds of um, different Python examples so even you can uh, replicate that same request yourself. If you did enjoy this series though, um, if you want to join my Discord, it would be a big support to me. We talk about all kinds of different things like this dude actually told me about um, some GTA cheats because GTA doesn't even have an anti-cheat. I give updated project news, so um, if you ever are super interested in a project, you can sign up to uh, be pinged whenever I send, a, um, send an alert. With that being said, I'll get back to you guys whenever I finish up a little bit more of the documentation and um, finish up all the code here. I don't think this is going to be a very long video, I just want to show um, the finished results. Good, well I would say good morning, but um, it's currently almost 1.30 in the morning. I just spent most of my night working and pushing through the rest of the wrapper and a few updates on the documentation. I wanted to go ahead and make this clip here in the video so I'm, everything's fresh on my mind. Really it's super simple, I added a few features, we have some um, checks for the response. I saw there were two main responses, that's detail which is whenever you're not you know, inputting something that you should be or an error where there's just you know, a JSON error or the server's not interpreting it properly. So as you can see here, we still have glo get global scan, get coin data, um, we have symbols list, um, get active symbols, which are, these are two uh, different ones. Let me talk about that real quick. So I may have mentioned in the previous video or earlier in this video that I don't actually know what the um, two difference between these two requests are, but now I do. So this one is getting a custom, um, getting a custom uh, symbols list, right? And it's using this unique ID. I don't know where it's getting that unique ID from, but don't worry, if you just pass in your cookie, you can hit this endpoint. Actually, for some reason, it'll still work without a cookie, but I'm pretty sure you need a cookie um, to initialize it. There may be some, something in the background still having the cookie in it um, that's sending with the request. I don't know, it's weird, but um, the point is, is uh, this is just a way easier way to get your active symbols instead of just um, getting the custom one that you still uh, already use that ID for. Sorry for the bad handwriting. So imagine this is your custom and this is your active um, symbols list. I don't know, but somewhere in the trading view um, API or somewhere in the background, 
you can request a custom list or an active list, which is the one that's linked directly to your account. Um, it's the one that, you know, if I load up TradingView right now, it'll be all the ones that I have. As you can see, here's my symbol list, and it's actually pretty much the same. I think it is the exact same as this right here. So like I said, somewhere in the background, um, it looks like they have um, a way you can have different kinds of symbols list. Maybe there's like templates or something. Maybe that's only for pro accounts. I'm not exactly sure, nor do I care. We're more worried that we can just get the active ones that we're using currently, which is really all we need. With that being said, those are both very neat functions that we can use. Um, this just gets the uh, symbols list that are colored, all of the colors of the different symbols or whatever. Um, and this is just get broker uh, trading panel news. Not very important, but it was a request, so I thought I should add it. This is get news. You can uh, pass different things into here to make it uh, different, uh, get different outcomes and stuff. Pretty cool and pretty simple, really. This is get indicators, pretty self-explanatory, just gets some indicators, and this one just gets the uh, popular indicators. And what's more neat about this one is you can actually search for different indicators. So say you want to get some data on a certain indicator, uh, you can just input the name here. I could add actual exceptions, because these are just if-else statements, but if I wanted to clean it up a little bit, I could add um, try and accepts, but I don't really see a point in it. This is really simple python and anyone should be able to understand it even if you want to edit this or make changes you can fork it i may merge it i don't care as of for now i really just plan on going to bed um, because most of my work here is done and i don't have a whole lot to worry about um, but everything is pushed and out there and i'm going to be making an announcement in the discord of course, this video will be out way before. Uh, this, this video will hopefully be out on Monday if I can edit all of it, but um, uh, we'll see. With all that being said, I really appreciate um, all of you guys sticking through this um, project as it kind of got rough whenever the private API came into play. I really don't think there was a point. There was not enough love for this project, and I think I'm just going to move on. If people start to pick up traction on any of my past projects, I will plan to come back to them and improve on them. But it's really just about showing me if people enjoy certain projects. So say if I get a project with, you know, five or six stars compared to a project that gets like 500 to 1,000, I'm probably going to work on that project more and make it better um, because that's what people enjoy to see or enjoy seeing and want to see more of. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. In the morning whenever I wake up, I will do a final overview of all the documentation and just kind of you know scan through it, show you guys um, everything that I've changed. May even add some updates before I uh, record, but um, with that being said, I'm gonna go to bed. I will see you guys in the morning. What's up guys, so it is the next day and I want to talk a little bit about the code that I have made. This is it basically officially done. Um, here and there I will add updates. There's a few things that I do want to fix, like these uh, if-else statements. These can be changed and be a little bit more efficient. Um, I could do that and a bunch of just other small things here and there to clean it up and make it look better. But as of for now, it's functional and it doesn't really matter. Um, it returns everything it should and um, all of them work. With all that being said, I'm done with this project and I'm very happy that I am. Um, it's been very boring, but it's a good way to show people how reverse engineering actually works. But before I end the video, I just want to go over everything that I've done so far so any beginners can um, just watch this video and kind of get a um, grasp for it. I do recommend you go and watch my first part where I do explain more of how the entire intercepting and reverse engineering part works. Um, this was more just of code and um, a little bit of documentation, but let's just go over everything real quick. So using something called Burp Suite here, I would uh, start it all up and I would start intercepting requests from their um, browser that they have built in. So first what we did is we used the proxy target repeater and um, decoder tab all to intercept, decode, and work with all of these requests. And intercept is where you can actually intercept each and every single request. You can forward them to the server or you can drop them. Dropping just means it doesn't go to the server. In HTTP history, you will see all of the HTTP history 
So say I open their built-in browser here and I go to blowgpt.com. Now, as you can see, after I load it all up, all the requests come through and we have some JSON responses here. If we go over to target, we can see all of the different uh, links that we hit. Here we have two Google Analytics links. I don't know what that is. Um, maybe some kind of support server of some kind. It could also just be some kind of logging server. It doesn't really matter. Along with the actual FlowGBT uh, server. This will just be a really easy way of organizing all your requests as you can see. Pretty easy and pretty nice. And what's beautiful about this is you can actually just see all of the API requests. You can see all the prompt requests. You can see all of the user information that gets sent. Um, this is just amazing, really. Back to proxy, as you can see, we have an input here, and that looks like it's URL encoded. Using the decode tab, we can decode, and here's a bunch of data. Or we can send this to the repeater and then get the same data. The repeater tab is useful is because you can edit the information here and then um, put it back in here to get different responses after you send the request. There you go, there's your Burp Suite basics. Um, if you wanna learn more, go check out the other video that I did on this. Um, I will be doing a full video talking all about Burp Suite and how to use it very in depth, um, but that's not up right now. Now that you've intercepted all these requests, you're gonna use something called Insomnia. Insomnia.rest is the link. Any other links um, are not the actual link. I really, Insomnia, if you want to sponsor me, I would love to. I love this um, little program. It's a really easy way to organize all of these requests and just make it look a lot cleaner and export them a lot easier. So here you'll arrange each of the folders to a specific part. Um, just organize all your requests and play with them. See if you want to send different kinds of um, data to get a different kind of response. Same thing with Burp Suite, except this is more just like your main area where you document all of your requests. Everything in here is pretty self-explanatory. Git, post, you have all of these um, different options here. Along with you can send now, generate client code, you can send on a delay, repeat on an interval. I mean, there's a bunch of different things you can do. Along with the fact you don't even have to log in or sign up for anything to use it. Um, it's just here if you want to. Anyways, with all of that being said, let's talk a little bit about the uh, documentation here. Really super simple. Uh, we have the uh, little area where you can uh, jump to all of the different uh, requests. And like I've said before, I'm using ChatGPT, so just be aware of any hallucinations. But really, the documentation is simple. If you want to check it out, you can just go to the GitHub link, which is TradingView API right here, as you can see. Um, Really just documentation and a wrapper for it, nothing special. This video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. I really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed teaching you guys something new about API hacking or reverse engineering. In the future, I will do more videos um, on exploiting APIs instead of just reverse engineering them. There are plenty of neat exploits you can pass into certain APIs and I plan to make my own custom API to teach you guys how different exploits work. I also plan to touch on um, token unraveling, getting into uh, reverse engineering different algorithms that even social media companies use. So please guys, if you really enjoyed this video, show the video and my uh, GitHub a little bit of support. I really appreciate it. As of for this project, I'm completely done and like I said, I'm proud to be done with it. Uh, but thank you guys so much for all the support on this uh, series and I'll see you guys whenever the next video comes out. Thank you.